everybody, it's CyberMark here, and today I want to talk to you about how I passed my CISSP exam in just 10 short years. All right, so about 10 years ago, uh, I volunteered to participate in a pilot program at work that was training junior analysts, really, in different cybersecurity disciplines. So uh, what it looked like is I went through a few boot camp style courses where uh, the goal was really to get people certified in different areas, right? So the boot camp had uh, Cisco Certified Network Associates, Certified Ethical Hacker, CEH, Security Plus courses, and it also had a Red Hat Systems Engineering course. So I had a minimal background in you know understanding what an IP address was, but that was about it before doing that. Um, and so it was a fire hose of information. A lot of stuff coming at me, uh, especially that Red Hat course. Um, at the end of the boot camp, I ended up earning three of the four. So I got my CCNA, uh, learned about routing and switching, uh, passed the certified ethical hacker exam, and my security plus. And it was great, and I had some credentials, but really I had certs with a lack of depth of understanding, especially of how to really apply the material in any meaningful way at work. But I had a foundation to build. I also knew how valuable the material was, and I really wanted to do this, right? So uh, what I did was I went home, built a home lab, uh, and really just tried to replicate those concepts I had learned during the course, right? So my lab broke all the time. Just maintaining that thing was uh, a knowledge building exercise in and of itself uh, because I had to get it to run in order to just get through one of the lab uh, setups that they had, right? So I had to get patches, had to figure out that, oh, my version of, of Kali Linux didn't have the tool that they were asking about because I had an older version. Uh, so things like that. So uh, what else did I do? I used my library account. So I really like libraries. Um, and how did I do that to pass my CISSP, right? So libraries often will have resources like O'Reilly Media, which is a really fantastic resource. Uh, for technology and business books. And then uh, some of the libraries I've uh, visited also have LinkedIn Learning as uh, a platform you can use, right? So what I did was I broke my learning into different domains. So a couple of the domains, I'll go over them really quick. Network security concepts like firewalling, DMZs, and packet analysis. So just understanding protocols and how to use Wireshark to understand the protocols that are going through your network. <clears throat> the other one was operating system internals and administration and ethical hacking and then general cybersecurity studies. So uh, as I mentioned with the network security stuff and packet analysis, it really was just that. I was trying to figure out why certain things were insecure. And I have a video uh, on my channel about uh, why Telnet is insecure. And you can see that's kind of the, the stuff that I would do to understand the different protocols I had learned about. Uh, I would often hear things like, oh man, make sure you're using whatever protocol because it's secure. And I, was, I would ask why, what, why is it insecure? And so doing these labs really solidified, <clears throat> excuse me, those concepts. For the OS internals and administration, uh, Windows side, Sys Internal Suite by Mark Rosinovich um, was a big one for me when I learned that. Again, there's another book on O'Reilly Media about um, Windows forensics that I found really helpful. Let's see, for Linux stuff, uh, reading man pages and just trying to use the system, right? Uh, you learn a lot when you are trying to accomplish certain tasks in a Linux system. And I actually have a video coming out soon about um, how I passed the Linux Plus exam in just 10 years as well. Uh, and then scripting in those, uh, those built-in shells for the OSs really helped me understand uh, those systems as well. So brash scripting for uh, Linux and then PowerShell scripting in Windows helped a lot uh, to, to really understand under under the hood what's happening. Ethical hacking, so what did that look like for that domain? Uh, really just taking Kali Linux and Metasploitable. There's a book out there called um, The Basics of Penetration Testing and I use that to just do the exercises, right? And uh, I have another video that talks about you just got to do stuff. And so get your hands on uh, time and study it, proper studying. The certs are one thing, but uh, really understanding the material and getting a hold of a keyboard uh, and, and pushing buttons really will, will 
build and, and cascade. It's really, it does compound over time. Um, so walking through exercises with that book, a few other ones, and anytime I had the opportunity to go to a course um, or I would see a video on something or hear a lecture, uh, I would say, hey, okay, let's see if I can replicate that. So using my, my lab for that. <clears throat> and then general cybersecurity studies. This is probably one of the more important ones for the CISSP. Uh, what did that look like? Well, Palo Alto Networks has uh, what they maintain as the cybersecurity canon. And that has a bunch of different books uh, that you can go in and read to understand the domain of cybersecurity, right? So books are a fantastic way to, to build your knowledge base. Um, again, I use the library system to get a lot of these books, whether it was in the ebook mode or uh, audiobooks. And then I would listen to these audiobooks on my commute. Uh, or just read the ebooks. I would you know, put them on my Kindle uh, through the library and, and go from there. Podcasts, a big part of what I do. So I started off with the Cyberwire podcast, listened to Risky Business, uh, Darknet Diaries, uh, and just cycled through various uh, cybersecurity podcasts, right? Um, I, I would listen to some. I'd like, okay, I like that episode, or I'd get recommendations from, from coworkers or friends um, and go from there. Another thing, uh, news feeds. We are all, I'm sure, guilty of just scrolling through our phones. And so what I did was I tailored my news feeds, both on social media and like any news sites that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I frequented. So like Google News. And I, I set alerts for things like cybersecurity, breaches. Uh, that way I, I knew what media was talking about when, let's say, a major retailer got um, attacked and, and breached. So what did that look like when the Target breach happened? What did that look like when the Home Depot breach happened? Uh, following those news stories is good. A, a great uh, journalist to follow is Brian Krebs because uh, he writes really well and it, it's suited well for the kinds of things that I'm into. So uh, actual study time, what did that look like? Early on the weekends in the morning. So right now it's 5, 14 a.m. This is actually take two of this video. Uh, and yeah, it's early on the weekends. And so about 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. is typically a study time for me every weekend. I still maintain that routine. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, while at work, because that's a big part of it, right? You can do all the studying all day long, but really you gotta apply this somewhere, right? And either you're doing some content like this where you're putting out how this stuff works, or you're using it at work, ideally, because it is supposed to be career-related. And so uh, I saw opportunities all the time to go more into cybersecurity uh, as much as I could, right? So I started, like I said, as an analyst, and then I wanted to be as close to uh, anything cybersecurity-related as possible. So they say luck favors the prepared, and I certainly wanted to be prepared so that when opportunities presented themselves, I could just take advantage of it. Uh, and so that approach worked out well for me. My career progression exposed me to a lot of different disciplines in cybersecurity, uh, including I've, I've been through courses for malware analysis, I've done some network forensic stuff, uh, ethical hacking, and even more recently, like risk assessments, right? So uh, designing an architecture for uh, you know a goal, a mission set, if you will, and then evaluating doing the risks, doing threat modeling, and then presenting those findings uh, after you know qualitative risk assessments to senior leadership for their approval. So uh, that really falls in line with the CISSP uh, domains as well. So actual preparing for the exam, what did I do? Again, going back to the library accounts and using uh, prep courses, so the lectures that are like on LinkedIn Learning, uh, some YouTube videos and the practice exams. So listening to those on my commute instead of the podcasts helped. And then when I was regularly scoring over 80% on the practice, practice exams, uh, that's when I said, okay, I think I'm ready. Uh, but what was really the driver behind it is I'm getting ready to retire from active duty military service soon. And the industry seems to, like I said, uh, value these uh, certifications. And so I wanted to make sure that I was prepared. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was I also signed up for a master's program. So it's not necessary, ob obviously, to earn a CISSP, but it didn't hurt me either. So a lot of the textbooks that I was uh, getting exposed to in my courses and, and in the course of my research really gave me a lot of uh, those other areas of 
information assurance that I didn't have formal exposure to. And so being able to read about them and write about them really shored up my knowledge base quite a bit. So that's it. There you have it. That's how I passed my CISSP exam in just 10 years. And that took about 10 minutes. So if you found it valuable, please like and subscribe. Thanks.